I didn't ask you to pray. No need to be <laughs> silent. After reading, reading the eight chapters, I decided I wanted to be a Walter. A oh, Walter. Yes. Right? Right? Have you mm -hmm. ever encountered Walters? Pardon? Have you encountered Walter before? No, no, not really. Walter's a special man, you know, that he, he, is. Can, he can stand there and do his Sorry. people can yell at him and say nasty things to him. And he just goes with the flow and does what he does. Yeah. I'm not a real go with the flow kind of guy person. <laughs> I don't either. It would be hard for me. <laughs> I was glad that Bob Goff settled down a little bit. He, he was outrageous the first few chapters <laughs> of this book. Now I have an easier time reading and feeling comfortable <laughs> with, with what he has to say. Did these chapters feel more realistic than the first eight? Yeah. Yes. I'm seeing quite a few heads nodding, so I'm I'm guessing we're not alone mm -hmm. in that thought. So I wonder um, the the airplane landing. Yes. So that oh, seemed, that was good. Yeah, and I appreciate the you know the, I guess not the dare, but you know be more risk taker and and just do it. I and so I wonder like, is that really as awful as it sounds you know like that the mountains are right there and he's you know like it's a couple feet you gotta do it right or you're dead or i mean if those of you i'm sure there's people who've seen um bob in person mm -hmm. you know is is there a bit of exaggeration like is because <laughs> that seemed really crazy it's hard to say <laughs> Um, I have met Bob in person. I did listen to him speak um, live and in person back in California. And he actually hosted something for Thrivent probably six weeks ago. And he talked for about 45 minutes. And um, his stories are really hard to tell if it's entirely true or if he's stretching the truth a little bit. <laughs> I have a feeling that it wasn't quite inches, that the canyon wasn't inches from the plane, maybe like a foot or two. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's entirely true. I just, I can't imagine doing any of the things that he mentions. That's certainly not a risk I would take in any way, shape or form, nor would I hand that off to someone who's only been flying planes for a year or two to try on their own. So I don't know. I was wondering if um, I didn't worry because I kind of felt like he was testing God to get him out of there, safely out of there. And it, it's my understanding we should we shouldn't test God because we shouldn't know, you know. I mean, why would, why would you take a chance like that? Why would you take um, skydiving lessons just for fun? I don't know. Well, I don't, I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I had mixed feelings about that story. That's fair. That's fair. We can certainly dive into that a little deeper when we get into small groups tonight. 
um, and we'll have just a little more time to talk about some of the details and the, the things that stood out. But what else caught your attention or you think is worthy of or not worthy of? We should talk about as a full group before we go into small groups tonight. One thing that I noticed that the eight chapters really seem connected by the idea of taking action, just not thinking about things and planning things, but mm -hmm. doing and becoming. And um, I that really resonated with me because I'm a planner. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I've got to be maybe nudged a little bit more to do. And so um, I, I thought I, I liked and, you know, as I went back after reading and looked at the chapters, there was something almost in every chapter about don't think so hard about things, but go, get out there and do and be. Yeah. How many of you are those kind of people that just go and do anyone <laughs> who who are the people <laughs> who like to have everything planned out even the like contingency plans if things go wrong the first time you know what to do the second time yeah me too i'm in the middle i am okay this may age me, but a lot of you, I think, will remember the old Bob Newhart show, and it was actually the first Bob Newhart show. One quote that still stays with me, and it got a good laugh, is I think his wife said, well, I can be as spontaneous as the next person if you, if you give me a week to plan it. <laughs> kind of how I live my life. <laughs> Sounds like I like it. <laughs> I think you can plan, but you have to be adaptable in case that plan go doesn't go as you think it will. That is something I'm learning very quickly right now. <laughs> Vicar Danny, can you share what being in the middle is like? Because that's something that I can't even comprehend right now. <laughs> sure. So I, I, I can't really necessarily say that I'm super spontaneous. I like to give it maybe like a little thought before going into something mm -hmm. but even just like having faith that even if I don't know how it's going to turn out like I'm going to give it my best effort and maybe give everyone that I'm doing this with like the benefit of the doubt um yeah that just just have a little forethought instead of jumping in completely but not not necessarily having a, a plan it's All okay right. I think as a younger person, I was one that would do stuff without thinking, you know, I would just do it. But as I get older and have learned that that doesn't always work, I've kind of laid back a little bit. So I don't know if it changes with your stages of life a little, you know, the risks and stuff. I mean, with, with him, definitely it hasn't. He's a risk taker, but um, <laughs> I, as a as an older person now, I, I have definitely, I'm more laid back. Yeah. I hope to be that way someday. Mary, yeah. wasn't it Churchill that had a quote like that? If you're not a liberal when you're young, you don't have a heart. And if you're not a conservative when you're old, you don't have a brain. I think that goes with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I like it. And I like it. I'm thinking maybe I never had a heart or a brain. So, <laughs> I don't believe that. But, but, you know, because seriously, even when I was younger, I would not have flown that plane where he did and checked it out. I wouldn't have skydived. I wouldn't have done it then, and I'm not going to do it now. Uh, but, but, and a lot of these things, he seems to know a lot of intriguing people that I don't. Sorry about all of you. You aren't as exciting as these people. You told <laughs> but in this, on the other hand, uh -huh. I can see that obviously I'm not going to do these, some of these things he's done with strangers and that, but the last chat, uh, last chat, uh, paragraph in chapter nine, I might try this says the next time someone near you messes up, well, you could pull them aside in private, okay, blah, 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 and give them instructions. But instead, 
uh, it says, just give them a hug. I'm, I might try this next time somebody messes up. I'm just going to hug them. Hey, they might think I'm nuts, but okay. It's um, COVID. Maybe after COVID, I can right? try that. <laughs> That's as scary as I'm going to get. <laughs> I like that idea. Makes it a lot easier. And it lowers the bar a little bit and just allows people to be people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's important for all of us to remember from time to time. So I'm looking at the time. I'm wondering if there's like one more comment or one more thing we should talk about as a large group before we go into small groups. You guys have brought up some really great points from these chapters and I kind of don't want to split into small groups because I feel like I'm going to miss something. One of these wonderful quotes you all have, but I feel like we'll be able to go a little deeper if we're in smaller groups and have a chance to chat a little more. I like his patience bucket. That Say more. Really, mm -hmm. That really resonated with me because I'm always got to get things, get it done, get it done in a hurry. And then when somebody doesn't get it done as fast, I think, well, I should have just done it myself. And I've had to learn to step back with my kids a lot and the whole patience thing really makes me stop and think a lot now. Got to give them a chance to make their own mistakes mm -hmm. and then be there to give them the hug when you try and fix it afterwards. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to split us up into groups now. Um, <clears throat> you should go right into your group. One of the groups will stay in, oh, just kidding. Um, we're just going to stay as a large group tonight. <laughs> uh, we're gonna... This is me being flexible, guys. I'm learning something new tonight, and you're teaching me and learning with me, and I appreciate it. Um, so I have a couple quotes that Vicar Danny kind of pulled out of these eight chapters, and I'm just thinking, like, we're doing a great job already. So I figure we'll just go chapter by chapter and kind of talk about the different things that showed up there. Um, just so we're all kind of in the same few pages. Um, so chapter nine is the from the lighthouse window where uh, he tried to play, play the piano and it wasn't nearly as good as the one who had gone before him, but years later sits down at a piano and plays it perfectly. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if you have had a lighthouse window moment. I'm putting you all on the spot, so it's it's hard. I'm sorry. But what? Okay, maybe we won't go there. What stood out to you from chapter nine? What was something that you resonated with, or that stuck with you, or that you can remember back? Um, maybe yesterday, maybe 20 years ago, where this was something or similar to something that happened in your own life. On the bottom of page 82, um, you don't need all the accolades that come with recognition, and you don't feel a need to criticize people who have gotten a couple things wrong or hit a couple of sour chords in their life. I thought that was really good. Mm -hmm. Back in the day when I was in school, I always felt like I had to be perfect and, um, and needed to be good in everything I did, but that's impossible. I could really yeah, relate so. to this, um, this chapter because of the piano playing and because I do play piano. Mm -hmm. And being that whenever I would play, I always had this expectation that I was gonna play perfectly and all I would hit all the notes <laughs> and I remember the first time I played for worship and I was so nervous and I played and I thought oh gosh I got to get everything just right 
And of course I didn't. Um, and I was the only one that noticed the mistakes. Um, so it, it reminded me, especially when he said on page 83, your faith isn't a recital. And it just made me think about how our lives, you know, our faith life is not perfect. There's days that we're going to be really, really strong with God, always with us. And we feel that presence. And then there's going to be days where we just fail completely. And we feel like we just can't do it. And where is God in the midst of all of this? So our faith will waver just like mm -hmm. anything we do. And it just was re, uh, kind of reaffirmed that it's okay. It's okay if we're not doing everything just how we think it should be doing or how we should be doing it. Yeah. Pastor exactly. Ben, do you have something? Yeah, I was just going to hop onto that because uh, I was a music major in college. And one of the primary reasons I switched my major from uh, uh, music business um, and wanting to do these productions and put on these beautiful shows um, was because I, I switched from that to theology and Christian ministry because I realized this idea of performance and uh, presenting polished things just wasn't who I was. Like I love polishing things and I love getting things to be just right, but it drove me nuts because I am not a polished person. It wasn't, it wasn't being authentically who I am. I always felt like I was wearing this mask or this face for people whenever I would do my uh, saxophone recitals and this, that, and the other thing. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm constantly struck by how just everyday life is never as polished as we want it to be. And I'm going to share sure. a secret. That's the case with all your pastors. They don't all, <laughs> all always have it put together. No. Sometimes they're falling apart uh, just as much as you are. And sometimes even more so. <laughs> So I've never, I've never experienced that, Pastor Sarah. I you always look like you're <laughs> together. Well, that's a joke. So <laughs> uh, just know <laughs> that we don't always have it put together. I'm sorry, Pastor Ben and Vicar Danny, for throwing you under the bus like this. But we don't always have it put together, no matter how great things might seem. Half the time, I feel like we are standing. Uh getting ready for something saying oh shoot i forgot mm -hmm. the prayers i forgot my stole i forgot to put uh, pants on you never know <laughs> you never know what it is I, I, and i see on on page 83 that um see and it's okay not to be perfect because it says our report card on our faith is it going to be about that? It's going to be about how we treat each other when we do mess up. Exactly. It's not about how we did ourselves if we messed up things, but how we treated one another when we did mess up. And mm -hmm. it also matters on how you treat yourself when you mess up, right? Like it's really easy it's really easy to give other people grace and to be gentle with them and to hold them gently and softly and give them a hug, right? But sometimes when we mess up, that's not as easy for us to do to ourselves. Or at least that's been true in my life. Yeah, the way that we, we talk to ourselves really matters. My mom's on this call and she'll, she would tell you that <laughs> she tells me that all the time. <laughs> this is Sherry and I totally agree with that. I really struggle sometimes with that. Um, <clears throat> especially sometimes, you know, Matthew was going to get a bump on his head. Matthew was growing. He's becoming a little person and I need to realize that that's just life like he is he is I can't control whether he's gonna fall down and get a bump um mm -hmm. and yeah I it's it's not always gonna be perfect his day is not gonna look like what I had planned so yeah uh, well we found out how perfect how imperfect we are tonight. We couldn't get on. We forgot how to get on. And <laughs> 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 
Yeah. <laughs> it but, happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> we but, are computer illiterate for sure. <laughs> but speaking of speaking of that related to music, it's a case of two if you sit there beforehand and think, well, this isn't going to go well. It isn't going to go well. Mm -hmm. And and part of it is mm -hmm. is thinking positive and trying to and um, and some musicians take beta blockers too. They say they help. <laughs> it's all about mindset for sure. <laughs> well, I, very, I much, to, very much so. Mm -hmm. To sh thank Mary because somehow I deleted the the um, email and so I didn't have the Zoom link. So she, quickly she rescued me tonight. So I can be You're here. You're not so. alone. You're <laughs> not alone. We we had an email too to find out. <laughs> so, all right. Here, here's here's yeah. considered your hug. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward to chapter ten, unless there's anything else, I don't think we're gonna get through all the chapters because there's a lot of good stuff in here, and that's just fine. Chapter ten, it's talking about the three green lights and the landing gear, oh, and yeah. holy smokes! Oh. Oh. This is why I don't fly airplanes, and I. <laughs> Stay on the ground. What stood out to you all in this chapter? Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, it did, yeah. it did. The light didn't go on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You better know what you're doing ahead of time, whatever project you're working on, that you better look through everything that's happening around you. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of where you are, where you're going. And many times we don't know where we're going. We kind of play it blind. But we go anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but it also talks about that playing it safe doesn't move us forward or help us grow. So right. I, I was married for 15 years, my second marriage. It was, right. wonder, it was wonderful. It was so wonderful. That's how I ended up out at church at Emmanuel Lutheran of Cicero. My husband was fantastic. <laughs> and it was wonderful. But maybe I wasn't growing. I was becoming dependent on him. I don't know. But then he died. And it's like, oh, okay, now. And now I have to grow a little bit and do some things and change and make some decisions and and uh, I think I actually do have more faith now since then. I, I do believe that strongly, so. Mm. There was that line in there on page 88 that says, if we want our faith to get stronger, we need to navigate some deep places. And I think we've all been there. For sure. We've all been yeah. there. Yeah. And probably not even that long ago either. That's yeah. probably something that's pretty fresh in each of our histories, right? Yeah, especially was... this... <laughs> Go ahead, Linda. I said, especially, especially this year. with COVID. Yeah. 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 A lot has changed this year. A lot has changed. And so when Bob was getting ready to land the plane, he, he did so bravely. Like, I don't know that there's another word to explain that, but I'm wondering if there's a time that, um, you have been called to be brave too. Or are you being called to be brave right now? I know I, uh, myself and Diane and Danny and a few other people put together a virtual Christmas by candlelight this year. And that was a thought I had way back when I thought, oh, we can't host this event. What are we going to do? We didn't want to give it up. So it goes online real soon and it, with the help of others, the strength of God, we did it. And I'm hoping that it turns out as good as we feel about it. So yeah, that was a huge step for me because I, I, something told me I can't give up. I can't, we can't just let this go under the table this year. So it's, Hopefully it's, next year it'll be back to normal, but for this year, maybe it's a reason others can enjoy it that usually don't. So. 
So please, if it's on your church website, uh, it's going to be on YouTube. Watch it. Okay. <laughs> St. John's is going to share it. So don't worry, folks. Y'all sure, I'll be that. watching it. Sure. Definitely, sure. Mary. Thank you and Diane and the others for doing that. I'm sure Deanna had something to do with it also. So. Yes. I, I did not, but I will be posting it on the website. Oh. Pastor Ty just sent me the link. So tonight, maybe tomorrow, I'll have it on the website. Good. But that was a huge step. I mean, virtually, is it's just huge at my age. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it takes a ton of bravery to even consider that possibility. Mm -hmm. Not, not to mention to go through with it. Right. And, and Vicar Danny was awesome. She, she knows all that computer stuff. So <laughs> it really... But to that end, Mary, that you were so open and willing to learn and try something new at a time when nothing, nothing is normal, but to say, you know, we're going to do this anyway, and we're willing to explore and to learn how to, how to navigate that. It, it was a step of bravery for you and Diane. Yeah, Diane too. I was just happy to walk with you. Yeah, we were too. <laughs> but it just makes me feel so good inside because I really... It was something that I'm so passionate about, I guess. So, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's for sure. Wow, way to go. There Thank are, you. There are two kinds of bravery at work here too. The guy up in the airplane had no choice but to come down. Mm -hmm. he couldn't stay up there with it. It ain't gonna work. There's sometimes we run into things where we do have a choice, but still we need to be brave. I think there's a difference between the two. Yeah. You know, like I said, the guy in the airplane, he had no choice. He can't stay mm. up. That ain't going to work. He was coming down eventually. One way or another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One way or another. The other was not so good. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, but bravery is, no. <laughs> you have to pick your bravery sometimes <laughs> if you don't have to. You know what I mean? Oh. Pastor Sarah, this is yes. I, uh, oh. I think that anyone, and this is everyone actually, going through um, the grief process of um, losing somebody very, very close to you, that that is like stepping off a plane, you know, um, you have to think for yourself, you have to go forward because you can't go backward. You're, you're set in a situation that you don't like, but have to get accustomed to you. Life has to go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that takes bravery every minute of every day. That it doesn't so get true. easier. That's mm. right. Yeah. And some days it's even harder than you thought it could be. Oh, yeah. And that takes even more bravery to just get out of bed and put some clothes on and face whatever is coming at you. Yeah. It's called one day at a time. Very true, Janie. Very true. Sometimes it's even one hour at a time, right? Sometimes. It's mm -hmm. true. One hour at a time, yes. Um, was there anything else from chapter 10 that we, uh, I could just stay here and talk about this one chapter forever, but there's a lot more good stuff in here and we only have like 25 minutes left. So, Ooh, I know. Shocking. <laughs> if not, we'll move on to chapter 11. Last one, best one. Oh, Pastor Ben just left. He says, thank you everyone for the conversation. He needs to hop off, but I have enjoyed our time toge together. Bravery requires vulnerability. Thank you all for being vulnerable tonight. And that mm. is so true. Mm. To share on a screen with people that you probably haven't met all of them in person, um, it's hard and it's 
it takes a lot of vulnerability and bravery. And so we thank you for stepping into this with us. Um, last one, best one. I'll, Anyone want to give a recap on the chapter? Because I've already okay. forgotten. I'll, I'll just start it out with two things that I pulled out of there. Maybe each person could do that. I, okay. I picked out of here, for, we talked about this earlier. For some people, it's easier to make plans than to make time, okay? And, and then the other one, God doesn't like us more when we succeed or less when we fail. He delights mm -hmm. in our attempts. That's the two I pulled out. Yeah, those are both really good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Unmute myself. There we go. I also like this was the one with the track guy that was blind, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah. And the vision that that I had, and I even put a smiley face next to it, was at the top of page 103 that he doesn't just give us himself, he gives us voices, other voices in people that we can trust. And I wrote down the name of some of my trustworthy friends. But I like the the vision or in my mind of he's standing at the end of the track calling your name, run as fast as you can in his direction. I, I highlighted that also. I did too. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I, a good one. <laughs> I Jane, I highlighted the on the last page 104. It was similar because it says Jesus is standing at the edge of eternity calling your name. He wants you to mm -hmm. run faster toward him as fast as your legs will carry you. So oh okay, yeah. Last, yeah, yeah. He's he's standing there, so. That seems like a lot of running to me, but I think it's all <laughs> worth it. No, you don't. You don't have. You don't have to run. You can fly. It says fly, fly. Okay. fly. <laughs> well then, I'll get right on that one too. <laughs> I like the concept of blind trust. You know, you trust in God blindly. Ah, what He early. says, you do, and and I think that's extremely hard for every one of us to do on a daily basis. And I always think of the one sermon I listened to where you know, the, God said to jump off the cliff and you'll be fine. And he ended the, the sermon with, will you jump off the cliff? You know, mm -hmm. The blind trust. And God said, you will be fine. Go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. But I, that just takes a lot of, of faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like standing there and you're going to fall backwards into somebody's arms. You're going to trust that they're going to catch you. The trust fall. Yeah. Vicar mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Danny, did you have um, something you were going to say? I saw well, you I, on mute. I, <laughs> uh, I was just thinking about my own moments of blind faith and, and being able to look back on those moments and uh, kind of think, first of all, like, wow, what was I so scared of? God was there with me the whole time, um, but that it turns out better than you could ever hope or imagine be because God is with you uh, in that. And for me, that moment of blind trust was taking the leap to go to seminary. Um, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and sometimes all it takes is just getting out of God's way, right? Amen. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At my, I've been my own stumbling block. Let me count the times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At my ordination back in August, my internship supervisor was the one preaching and she shared just like the bus on Extreme Makeover Home Edition. I don't know how many of you remember that show, but I certainly do. At the end, they would say move that bus. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And she reminded me that, um, and all of us gathered that even when we're stuck and kind of lost, that we need to move the bus and just get out of the way so that God can work. And um, that has been something that stuck with me for the last three months of being a pastor. Um, so much so that there's a little bus on my desk to remind me of that, um, <laughs> yeah. even on the hard days. So. Oh, that's good. 
That's a good visual. So if anyone else needs a bus, you can get them on Amazon. They come in a two pack <laughs> and give one to a friend. Christmas is coming. It's a great stocking stuffer. <laughs> Chapter 12, three minutes at a time. That was really good. Holy smokes. I think I started crying. Uh-huh. Yeah. I've done a lot of flying ever since I started seminary, I guess five years ago now. Five falls. I don't know. Twenty no, oh, only four. Four falls ago. Uh, I don't know. Whenever I started seminary. I flew a lot because my family's in California and so I was going through airports nearly every holiday and summers when I could and um I saw a lot of TSA people mm-hmm. and I saw a lot of other people interacting with the TSA people and it wasn't always the kindest interactions <clears throat> and just thinking mm-hmm. about how just the 30 seconds or three minutes you have with them can lead to something so much bigger makes me grateful for all those times I was in the airport. It makes me think of how every time, um, still (laughs) when going to California, there is delays or something happens and you have to rebook in the airport and it's not what you anticipated how, being kind to the booking agents and to just all the people you interact with can mean so much because I, I certainly don't think I'll become best friends with any of these people, but you never know. And so I'm wondering if there's been someone in your life that you have created a friendship with three minutes at a time or just in little chunks over the course of your life or... Yeah, I don't have any answer to that specifically, but as I was reading this chapter, um, I got an email from, I, I'm a teacher at a high school, and I got an email from a student I had had 20 years before who was oh, wow, not a great student, didn't end up graduating from our high school. I don't really know. I, I think he graduated from somewhere. Um, and in his email, he just talked about how life was, you know, he has learned as an adult that his, that he had things to overcome based on his background and the way things were going in his life. But anyway, the email that the, the purpose of the email was to thank me for an Abraham Lincoln little saying that I kept by the pencil sharpener because it talked about Abraham Lincoln's failures and that we don't remember Abraham Lincoln for any of his failures, yet he had lots and lots and lots, and then became elected president, which is really what people know. And it was a long enough reading that I purposely put it by the pencil sharpener and had it there for years and years and years, because a kid who is dawdling by the pencil sharpener, I kind of thought they could absorb the story (laughs) and the point of it. So this kid out of the blue finds my email, goes back to the school website, finds my email and emails me to say, hey, thanks for putting the Abraham Lincoln story by the pencil sharpener. Mm -hmm. And for, and there was one other thing you, he just thanked me for um, making him give a speech that he was not ready for. And I said he could do it another day and that he could do it. And, you know, whatever that was in the P.S. And I was reading this chapter at the time and I just thought, oh, you know, you know, like, yeah, kudos that I lived up in that instance, right? But like how many other other instances went by that I could have done better, right? Like, because it means so much that somebody emails 20 years later, like there's a lot of other ones I, you know, other moments I, I'm sure I could have had. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's good. 
There's probably a lot of people that you touched you didn't realize. Exactly. I'm going to interject in here because I worked with Stacy for a while and I know there were many, 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 many others some there <laughs> and still are some. So sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. You too. Maybe it's not three minutes at a time, but maybe it's um, seasons at a time where there's someone that you've gotten to know really well during a certain period of life. And then you just kind of stop talking for a while or lose contact. And years later, you come back and pick back up where you started or where you left off. And you continue the relationship and a similar thing happens. And um, I don't know. I found some of those people to be some of the best friends I could ever have because they're there when I need them, mm -hmm. even when I don't always know when that is. I think mm -hmm. we're finding, I think we're finding in this time of COVID, we're all at home more. And I know I have been on the phone more and we, I was on the phone with a friend all way back the year one in high school that we had a classmate who just passed away and we were good friends in high school and we kind of, you know, everybody goes their own way when you're raising your children and that. And I think uh, last night we visited for almost an hour and we recalled some things and I thought, well, how did we lose and how did we lose touch like that? And we even talked about our faith a little bit, and it was interesting to renew so much of our similarities that have kind of been on hold all these years. So I have a feeling we're going to be in closer contact now that we've reconnected again. And so there are even some blessings of COVID that do happen, even though we don't see it right away. Right. Uh -huh. Well, I have to say that Linda and Ray were a part of my life at a very young age. And we reconnected many years ago, but certainly not through the, the 20s and 30s of my life, but now have reconnected. And they are two of the most important people in my life, in my faith life as well, because we know that we can lift each other up and be there for each other. And it's just, it's an awesome feeling knowing that you have people in your circle. And he talks about that, about bringing people into a circle and, and sharing that love and sharing God's love. And that it, it, it helps when you're having those difficult times. Yes, yes, For God sure. did connect us many, many years ago, yes. He did, he did. Crazy how God works some days. Mm. Amazing. Beyond our Amazing. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so chapter 13, I'm realizing we're not going to get through all these chapters. We've got 12 minutes left and we're only on chapter 13. <sighs> <laughs> so chapter 13 was titled Carl's Dive. Um, and that one was about oh, the was, young man oh. diving into the water and it being much, much shallower than anticipated. Um, what stood out to you most about Carl's story? He was concentrating on an impression rather than concentrating on where he was going. He was mm -hmm. for the moment, he wasn't looking ahead. And mm -hmm. I, both of us know of someone personally who did the exact same thing and while, and I don't remember if he passed away. I think so. I think he did pass away, but he dove into the water similar to what Carl did, and it was shallow, and he broke his he broke his neck. I think I think he passed away. Oh. Uh, not was, not of it directly, but not directly, but, but eventually. But sooner but than I sooner don't, than likely. Yeah, and um, yeah. I don't know if you know no one around here. Well, he was from Tigerton, so. Yeah, that's a that's a year to mm. go, but this did actually happen. But Carl's story is fantastic because he didn't give up. 
he went on to do something yeah. better with his life. You know, he found Jesus. You know, he, he went on. His life became better than maybe it could have been before. Who knows? You know, mm -hmm. Because he had faith and he just yeah. kept on. And look what, look what he all, you know, accomplished. All of the things he, you know, even with, even with all, just your tongue. Your tongue, and I'm sorry. I, could, I don't think I could have done what Carol did. No, no. He must have he kind of uh, did home what he went through and with his abilities. It's kind of humbling. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. my thought, Linda. That uh, yeah. I was so impressed by how he was still able to carry on because of all the good things still happening in his life that, you know, whatever um, had happened previously, you know, and living with a disability didn't stop him. It only made him uh, appreciate what he had more. Um, and sometimes mm -hmm. uh, it takes a big loss to sort of be reoriented into re remembering what, what really is meaningful and what really matters. Um, yeah. Speaking for myself personally, I mean, Carol brought up, you know, what it feels like to grieve. Uh, I lost my dad in February and uh, it, I mean, it rips you apart in the moments and, you know, when, when grief finds you, um, but to remember that there is so much good happening and that, that one um, sad thing isn't the end all be all, that there is so much more to live for and so much more happiness to be found in this life. Mm. I likened Carl to, um, oh, tell me your name, just one Eric, Joni Erickson Tata, um, how she has, how her life has been Oh, used. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, about, um, after her skiing accident and, um, you know, she found love, she, you know, she found a husband, and I think they have children. But, um, but it was just how you wonder whether they could have done what they've done without that disability. God used them in their disability. On the other side of that, I'm wondering, wondering if anyone's read the book, Me Before You. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So that's, it's an incredible book, but it's entirely the opposite of what we're kind of talking about. It's a man who is very active in his life, um, young, kind of goes about all the things and is hit by a car one day and becomes a quadriplegic and decides that's it. There's no point in living any longer. Um, and so as I was reading Carl's story, that was another story that came to mind. And granted, that is a story. That's not real life. Um, but how one decision can change so many thereafter mm -hmm. so we briefly talked about chapter 14 at the beginning and how landing the plane in the lake that seemed far too dangerous for any of us to try um was mm -hmm. a little ridiculous but I'm wondering, we'll take it a little different way. He explained this uh, portion of Canada and his flying back and forth to the cabin as a bit of heaven on earth for him. And so I'm wondering, where is heaven on earth for you? My deer stand. <laughs> Out in the woods. Okay. I, it's, it's so beautiful, so quiet. You're away from everything, and it's just like I can hear God out there. It's just breathtaking. Hmm. 10,000 feet up at a high mountain lake fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Hiking up in, 
hiking off where all you see is nature, quiet and peacefulness. Mm -hmm. uh, we can find that around here too, just behind our house in the woods. Mm -hmm. So. Sandy, is there a place where heaven is on earth for you? Mm, the beach. <laughs> I was transformed by California and I know that probably <laughs> sounds very cliche, but I went to California uh, in January of last year and just, uh, I, I love the water. I grew up, you know, I like Michigan, uh, but having the mountains plus the water, I mean, it is just dreamy palm trees. I wrote down Hawaii, Danny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, don't go there. You won't want to come home. <laughs> um, my mom and I are planning on going when, when all this COVID business is over. I'll have to uh, let you know what I think. Good for you. Yes, you'll. Oh, yeah, it's it's awesome. <laughs> you'll love it. You'll mm -hmm. love it. You'll love it. Yeah, yeah. I think heaven on earth for me is somewhere that's just quiet. Mm -hmm. It's where my phone is turned off. Yeah. It's where um, I can just be. And sometimes that's curled up on the couch reading a book until I fall asleep. And sometimes that's out hiking. And sometimes that's being with friends, just sharing a meal together, you know, back when that was something we could do. Um, but heaven on earth can look a lot of different ways. And it's most often when the distractions are taken away. And so I'm trying, I don't mm -hmm. know, I encourage you all to find a way to do this too, to make, to make that heaven on earth place part of your daily life. Now it's, it's not realistic to go to Hawaii every day. Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish it's a long plane ride and it just doesn't work logistically. Um, <coughs> but is there a space in your home that could be heaven on earth for you? Is there a little corner somewhere or a closet that you could turn it into heaven on earth? Because um, I think right now with, with all the things going on and everything so upside down, we need to be reminded of that more frequently than just deer hunting season and more frequently than when we just get a chance to go on a trip. Mm -hmm. um, so I encourage you all in these next couple of weeks with Christmas coming and all the excitement that comes with that to find heaven on earth somewhere a little closer, somewhere you can experience daily. And maybe it's, maybe it's drinking your morning cup of coffee or your cup of tea if you don't like coffee or your morning glass of water because that's good too. Um, <laughs> but heaven can be present all around us and it seems that it's really easy to miss these days. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the time. It is 728 and I know we have kind of said we'll go about an hour um, and so I want to honor that. I want to respect your time. I know you all have lots of other things you could be doing on this cold Thursday night that's really dark outside. Um, but thank you for joining us. We will, I think, maybe in January, we'll plan on an hour and a half. Danny? Tentatively put that down as an hour and a half on Thursday, I'm pulling up the date, January 7th. Um, so let's plan on gathering from 6.30 to 8 on that evening to um, finish chapters 15 and 16 and to go and finish the book together. Um, I don't know. I think there's a lot more great, funny, ridiculous stories to come. Um, and I think... An hour just isn't enough time to talk about them all, <laughs> especially with the holidays and especially with so much going on, uh -huh. our, going on in our lives between now and then. I wonder if I could make yeah. a request. We sure. got the 
study guide like last week and I started reading a month ago. So I started forgetting some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Can we get the study guide a little earlier so that we can jot down notes as we go? I mean, I underlined things in the book, but <laughs> is that acceptable or no? Uh, it's entirely possible. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to make promises. <laughs> that is something that Vicar Danny put together this month. Um, oh, okay. And was gracious oh. enough to send out. Um, okay. No, I didn't I, know that. <laughs> so. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I think we can certainly try to yeah. have something put together sooner, but I'm not going to guarantee it because no. there's no. Uh, quite a few worship services between now and then, mm -hmm. quite a few things to get ready for and prepare for on our side of things, um, but we will do our right. best to get some of those questions out and some of the quotes out to think about um, prior to book group. I, I apologize because I thought that <laughs> you got this from some other book. You know how they put study guides yep. together on books? Okay. Yeah. No, no it's, I, it's I, perfectly it's fine. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that that has been useful. I'm sorry for the people of St. John's. I did not forward that to you because I had already sent out the email. But if you want it, I am happy to pass it along. Um. Yeah, it just it's a place to start, right? A place to start thinking about kind of how this book intersects with our lives. And mm -hmm. I think um, I think Vicar Danny and I can do our best in these next two weeks or so to get something put together so that you can have it in your hands sooner than later. And um, don't sweat it because it's a big time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really, it's I fun for us. It's some of the easier work we have to do. So, you know, I think we can make time for it. Oh, okay. I have a question one yet. Uh, Mary talked about what she was having put out on YouTube and what you put together with that candlelight. Now I know Pastor Ben is off of here already, but can someone get that to us at Emmanuel Lutheran of Cicero so we know where to look this up and see it? Yep, definitely. Uh, yep. Okay. Definitely. I will make sure that Pastor Ben gets yeah. the, the link. let him know to let us know from this, at least from this group, if not, I'm sure other people from our church would be interested in seeing it also. Well, you all seem I'd, quite tech savvy. It is, or will, it will live on YouTube. Um, okay. What, what's it called? And let what, me put it uh, in the chat. Because I just, I discovered something a couple of weeks ago. Let me see if it's on YouTube and I'll just link it here. Okay. If not, I'm sure Pastor Ben can share it with Zoom oh. Worship. Um, yeah. Maybe not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. All right. Um, but yes, we will make sure all of you have access to that somehow, some way. Appreciate it. Are there... Yes. <laughs> Janie will send it to you as well. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm wondering, I guess, before we close, just because I, I like reading books, I like doing things. I'm wondering, um, since next month we'll be wrapping this up, is this something we want to continue moving forward? Or is one book kind of enough for now? Should we, as pastors, be thinking of what another book could be that we could read together? Or has this, this been too much and this has been exactly what you need? Any answers are fine. I just want to gauge the interest of the group before we put. I'm, I would like and to. And I wondered more. if we could have a written. I would have oh. liked to see less chapters for discussion because I just don't really always retain the different scenarios in the chapters and then be able to discuss them. I think it's easier to discuss two chapters at a time, okay. three chapters, and then the book would last longer and you'd go longer. Okay. That's just my thought, but. No, that's good feedback. I just feel and like my, when I get to this, the last. I also one, have a suggestion. That, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Debbie. Um, but I, I just feel by the time I read the last oh, chapter, I forget what the first chapter was about. <laughs> okay. Okay, my, my suggestion is a written response. I would love to hear what everybody always is like in all of your lives. It doesn't have to be a 10-page paper 
just a little paragraph or two. I would love to hear more from as a response to the book. Okay. Kathy, were you going to say something? Just that too, I would like to do another Bible study. I just, I love interacting with others and hearing, you know, sharing our faith. There's always something to learn. Okay. Is that, if you're in agreement with Kathy's statement, could you like nod your head or a thumbs up or something? Wave your hand, do a dance. Kids, <laughs> they can't see your hand. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I see it. I see yes, it. Right. I, think, I think we can find something else for another one. Yes, another one would be good. Uh, okay. There was a lot of information yes. in a short time. Is there any way it could be extended a little longer? Yeah. More That's than, what, yeah. We didn't really have time to discuss a lot in such a short time. It's a lot of information at one time. It was all very good, uh, but That's very not, good. If you just take a couple of chapters at a time, that would be easier to digest, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. A week or something. Chapters, yeah. What did you say, Vicar Danny? I'm just thinking for the spring, we could meet maybe every other week, you know, maybe meet more frequently and take smaller chunks, chunks of the book. Mm -hmm. Smaller bites. I, I'm just thinking yep. about. <clears throat> yeah, that would be okay. Okay, we'll play with that. Um, we'll, we'll just plan on January being a longer session mm -hmm. um, to kind of wrap this book up and we'll kind of see if we need to do a session in February on everybody always to finish finish the discussion or continue it we can do that too um as we were planning yeah go ahead julie i do like the breakout sessions because i think it makes us um you know at least in a smaller group um maybe easier to share that rather than a big group um because okay. i um you know that's just my opinion but you know, especially if it's a, a with somebody that you know and that you trust and then you, when you come back as a big group you can like we did last time you know share okay. what yeah. um what you heard the other person saying find out that you both have the same thing you both talked about the same things yeah okay that is great feedback we um as we were envisioning this granted this is only month two we had no idea what this would look like or how many people would be joining us or if um, eight chapters was not enough for some. Um, so this was a huge experiment. And so this all this feedback is super helpful. Um, and we'll kind of take that into consideration with our next book. Um, I will just make a little plug for uh, St. John's. And really, if anyone else wants to join, we will start a monthly book club in January. Um, Denise is going to help me with that, where we'll read a whole book a month. And so if that's more your speed, um, you're welcome to join us. Just let Vicar Danny or Pastor Ben know, and we can get you that information to join us. Um, and that'll be an entirely different kind of thing. Um, <laughs> fiction, nonfiction, kind of all kinds of fun stuff. So that's something entirely different, but if that's something you're interested in, know that you are welcome to join us. Um, and also, yeah, if you have other more feedback, we are always looking for it. And so please share it with your pastors. We're doing our best. We're trying new things. We're trying all this technology stuff. Um, and it's good to know what works and what doesn't. But let us close in prayer. The Lord be with you. Yeah, also with you. Also with you. Also with you. With you. Loving God, thanks for making us brave. Thanks for inviting us to spaces where we can be vulnerable and where we can share with others. Thank you for being with us when it's hard to be brave and for reminding us that you are there with us every day always. 
God, we thank you for the people that you have placed in our lives all throughout our journey. We thank you for the way they have impacted us and have left their marks on our story. God, we thank you for this time together and this time to share and to just think a little bigger about who, who you love and how you love all of us so deeply. God, we love you and we need you and we can't ever live without you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining. We'll see you back on January 7th at 630. And we'll do our best to get a study guide of some sort out to everyone. We'll see. We'll see. It's fine. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Don't sweat it. <laughs> Happy Night. Advent and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Celebrate yeah. well, some way. Take care. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Stay healthy. Merry Christmas.